Okay, welcome, welcome to this um, brief tutorial. Some people have appreciated what I did with um, particles in Godot. Uh, this is a representation of a galaxy, a fictional galaxy, even if previously I've worked on, on the real Milky Way. Since I'm doing this uh, thing for a tool I'm, I'm developing for for a video game it's a third party tool that allows players to find things within the huge galaxy that was made available in elite dangerous so on to how i did that uh we start from an image in this case i'm using um gimp and i have this image a uh, high resolution image of this fictional galaxy even if it has also real systems in it so anyways what i did was to uh, try and extract uh, or highlight the shape of the arms so i converted into a black and white image uh, I subdivided by channel so that I was trying to highlight certain features of of, uh, of this galaxy with some uh, faded attempt. Anyways, once you manage to extract that, I'm really not an expert with games, so you might be able to do something better, like uh, you know, highlight the, the brighter parts and and darken the, the black ones. Once you have an image like this, you go in Blender and you create, let's, let's start over. Let's create a plane mesh. You set the size, whatever you want. I use 10 meters because it's easier than to scale up with a somehow accurate measure. Then you go into edit mode and you have to subdivide the four um, vertices you have as much as you want. So in this case, for example, I have, oh boy, here, subdivide, I subdivide it 10 times and then I subdivide it other 10 times and then by two. So I have quite a lot of vertices it's up to you you can just have you know 10 or 100 or 50 whatever you want then you add um material to it and you go into this this view just move it up and select shader editor and you will see these two nodes that represent the classic material you add the, the standard one then what you need to to add is a texture just just for reference is not necessary but i usually do that and use the the picture you have of the galaxy you connect the color to the base color maybe you want to reduce specular so it's it's better visible and uh, yeah that's basically it over there you don't you don't even need it just for you know for reference to see if, it, if uh, the displacement is working correctly the next step will be to add this you see this um tool icon you go you go to modifier you use displace uh, you can move this mid-level to zero if it's a plane so that the zero point will correspond to the origin anyways you add the new texture galaxy then you go to the texture and you select it again in arms okay this doesn't look correct the reason is simple because you have to map to extend to the whole surface and still it doesn't look right 
But if you go back here, instead of using local coordinates, you use UV. And then you have the displacement map applied to this uh, plane object. Now, if you go into edit mode, you see it's gone. One thing you don't have to forget is that you have to apply this modifier to the mesh. So you see, black correspond to zero level and then full brightest color correspond to the highest level. If it's too high for you, you can just, you know, modify the object using the scale tool. That's one way of doing things. Anyways, you go into added mode. And for example, in this image, you see there were some artifacts like this that we don't want. Anyways, we will select one vertex that correspond to the black part, the lowest. Then you go to select and you select side of active. I don't really understand how this works, so I just had to play around with axis and direction. There we go. It's selecting whatever it's exactly at the same height, but you can add a threshold and you start removing other stuff. So I think I, I, I use the lower threshold, or maybe higher. Let me see how it will look. There. Anyways, if you don't have those artifacts, it's, it's much easier to do. I think I use a, uh, a lower threshold like this one. And then you just remove the vertices. And then I manually removed a few of them with, uh, you know, just the select tool. And then remove vertices, vertices. So you clean up the image. Like so. Once you're done, you can also use the cleanup tool to merge by distance. Like so, you can go as up as much as you want. Or you can also use limited dissolve that goes by difference in angle. I also use, you know, whatever you have to your, uh, available to you to reduce the number of vertices because we don't want this to be too heavy. Uh, another thing that I was doing was to smooth the vertices. Let's go to object mode. See, it starts to take shape. You just have to remove those um, loose vertices. Oh, by the way, you can do that automatically somehow. Mesh, clean up, delete, loose. It does a little bit of clean up of those vertices that are loose. Another thing that I did was to scale this height down, copy and paste, rotate, like so, and then you mirror the object, the wrong axis, mirror by Y global, there you are. And eventually you will want to use Control 
J to merge the two uh, the two sides, so it will be symmetrical. Anyways, this is specific to to this galaxy thing. You can use height maps, for example, if you want to to have particles on on a terrain. This might look like a weird mountain range. So once you have the mesh, you you export into whatever format you prefer. I use wavefront because I just I just need the, the shape, nothing else. You go into Godot and you add the mesh into your scene. I have created different layers to make um you know also the bulge much um thicker than the arms anyways you you have those shapes that you will then hide and for example you select let's just leave one of them like the main arms, for example. You have you have these these particles. Imagine that there's nothing here. So, so what 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 do you have to do in order to have particles that meet on that shape on onto this shape, the main arms. You just go to particles. I mean, select the the, the emitter you want. You select particles. And you create a mission point from a mesh if you have saved into your resources or from a node if it's a node in your scene. So in this case, it's main arts. You select OK. And you have a few options. You can, um, you know, put points only on the surface of, of this mesh or you can use surface points plus normal so they will eventually move into the direction of the normal. This is to my understanding, as I do not need that. Or, uh, as I used, uh, a volume. So it will be emitted also inside the shape of the galaxy. And then you select the number of, of emission points you want. For example, I think I had here like 75,000. And you can click on create. If I use volume, it's gonna it's gonna take a lot to render 75,000 emission points. So I'm not going to repeat that. But anyways, what it does is to create this point texture. You see, 2048 by 24. It's each point has, uh, to my understanding, a coordinate that is stored into an RGB value. And so you will have then your particles emitting into that specific point. What I did not manage to do, it should be very similar, it should create also a color texture so that uh, the particle will have a color on each uh, position it generates based on a texture you, you, you have. But I don't know, I didn't manage to make that work so that's why I'm using layers and have um, different color per layer. In this case, it's it's a gradient, a color ramp that goes from white to blue, and then I have other fainter particles, other red particles. Then I have these sort of cloud effects, and then I have the stars in the bulge and a denser cloud so the end result is what you've seen at the beginning of this um, sort of tutorial another thing you might want to do is to use uh, not um, a 3d geometry uh, for this um, 
huge amount of particles because here we have 50,000, 70,000, 5,000, 30,000, 20,000. So we have a few hundred thousand particles emitting at the same time. And, you know, to avoid overloading your CPU, you don't want to draw too many complex, uh, I mean, the, the simplest geometry you can. So what I used was not a plane, because you will see why later on. You will use a quad mesh. So it's just, you know, four vertices. Um, and then you, you create a material. The material will have a texture that in this case has this uh, radial gradient only. You can make it transparent, uh, tweaking the alpha. And of course, selecting transparent. In my case, I also use unshaded because I do not need that. These are supposedly emitting light, so there's no need to to get light from from things. Depth test also is it's not needed in my case. Uh, so the more you you know, the more calculation you remove from the the CPU or the GPU would be the better for performance reasons. Not receive shadow, disable ambient light, those are optionals, but transparent is, is necessary to have this kind of effect, you know, cloud effect. It's really useful also in other application. You can imagine having some sort of volumetric uh, clouds scattered around your terrain. For example, um, oh yeah, another very important thing is that uh, if you do not set billboard mode to particles billboard, you will have the particles emitting in only one direction. So, oh, that's why cloud. Material parameters. If you remove this, see, particles will be oriented only in one direction, and the effect is pretty weird. So you will have to use the regular or the particle billboard. I have no idea what the difference is, but this works pretty well for me and since i'm using particles i think that's the correct selection um, basically this way the um, quote will always look towards the camera towards you and using a uh, quote mesh and this technique it lowers a lot uh, um, the gpu consumption as a matter of fact, using nothing more than a hundred thousand particles at the same time, rendering this, you see, the CPU, I mean the GPU doesn't go beyond 26-30%. Plus, I've done a little trick, you see, lower to 2.7%. Because after a few seconds, I'm not moving this view, there's no need to redraw every frame. So, what I did was to, in this viewport, to use a script that, um, in, in other words, stops the rendering. See, instead of update mode, you just do it once, and it kind of creates a screenshot of, of the galaxy. I mean, of whatever you have in that viewport. So this is um, the way you can have, uh, you can save a lot of, of, of GPU processing power when not using something. Yeah, I think I've covered everything. If not, please let me know what uh, doubts you have about what I did here.
and I will be gladly helping the community to make uh, more extensive views of this great tool that is Godot Engine. And that's it. So, bye-bye.